Ola from Lisbon, Portugal, where I'm getting a little bit of inspiration on our energy future. You see some very remarkable things have happened in this country over the last 10 years. 10 years ago, about 25% of the electricity grid was running on renewables. Now, the first seven months of this year, 2024, it's been 83%, frequently peaking above 90%. So something very dramatic has occurred and it's really good. And it's in a country where they've struggled economically. You know, right now the population is contracting slightly. GDP growth hasn't been great. Um, uh, salaries are not high. Uh, but if you talk to people here about all the problems and all the rest of it, and they'll happily share them with you, and then talk about energy, they're extremely proud of this transition that they've made into renewables. And they've done a really wonderful job. So if I dig into it, at the moment a big chunk of this is uh, wind, about 30%. A big chunk is hydro, they've got a strong history with hydro there. And a relatively small chunk is actually generated by solar. And there's lots more to come there because that's sort of scaling up rapidly now. And behind me is one of their old coal-fired power plants. They're all gone now. Much was made earlier this year of the UK shutting down its last coal-fired power plant. And it was big news because, hey, the UK is a really big economy. But these guys shut down their last one in 2021. How good's that? Nine years ahead of schedule. Nine years ahead of what they targeted themselves. Because once the transition has started, it's actually a lot quicker than you think. So they've done a fabulous job in that transition. The other thing I like to talk about here in Portugal is what they're doing with pumped hydro storage. So they're storing energy in their hydroelectric dams by when they have excess renewables on the grid by pumping water uphill. Hey, we've been doing that as a energy technology for 2000 years, it's very old, but now we're doing it on an industrial scale and we're using it to balance out all of the different variations in the renewables uh, inputs into the grid. They're doing a great job of it here and they just recently came to the end of a vast hydroelectric project to increase that capacity about 65 miles east of Porto in the north of the country. So a mega project that's really going to help them to elevate their renewables uh, to a whole, whole other level. In fact, they're going to be exporting this stuff soon. They're certainly going to get to 100% renewables on the grid very quickly indeed. So a tremendous story. And I guess the two main messages are if we look at what they're doing here, they've got all the ingredients that constitute our future just about everywhere on the planet. and pumped hydro, stored potential energy is a huge part of the batteries we're going to be putting on the grid. Doing a lot of those projects now in China especially, but also the US, Japan, my home country, Australia, and elsewhere in Europe. Very few people talk about it, but it's actually a huge part of our future. They're also really experimental. They've tried other things. They've gone into wave power and had a huge project offshore here. Um, and then discontinued it because it's not very efficient and it's really hard when it comes to maintenance, a really harsh environment in the ocean. So they've got back to the simple things, wind, water, hydro, and of course solar, which is now scaling very, very rapidly. And they're gonna smash through 100% renewables for their grid very quickly indeed. So a great story on how quickly things can happen and a great metaphor for what the composite mix looks like for most countries on our planet in the near future.